Hi there, in this video we will learn about electron gain enthalpy. To understand, let's consider a neutral gaseous atom X accepting an electron to become X minus anion. Now in this process of becoming a gaseous anion, either the energy is released or the energy is absorbed. So there is some sort of energy change that we are defining as electron gain enthalpy. So we can define electron gain enthalpy as the enthalpy change when an electron is added to a neutral gaseous atom to convert it into a gaseous anion. And you can see how we are writing it. This Eg stands for electron gain. This H is for enthalpy and this triangle that you see, this is for delta where delta represents this change. So delta EGH is how we represent electron gain enthalpy and just like any other enthalpy, the unit of electron gain enthalpy is also kilojoule per mole, alright. In this whole process of becoming an anion from a neutral gaseous atom, either the energy has to be absorbed or energy is released. So depending on that, we can have electron gain enthalpy as positive or negative. So what is this positive electron gain enthalpy? When energy is absorbed on addition of an electron and delta EGH is then positive. Whereas when we are talking about negative electron gain enthalpy, then the energy is released on addition of the electron, right? So delta EGH is negative. Now, when is energy absorbed or when is the energy released? How do we get to know? So consider this, if there is this X minus anion which is being formed is becoming stable. Do you understand? It will release energy. Whereas if this X minus is becoming unstable, that means it would not want to become X minus, right? So yes, when we have positive electron gain enthalpy, addition of an electron makes an atom unstable. Whereas when we have negative electron gain enthalpy, addition of an electron makes an atom stable, okay? So, release of energy is always associated to the stability like we know and that is the same case here. Now, let's try to explore these factors affecting the electron gain enthalpy like atomic size, effective nuclear charge, screening effect and half filled or fully filled subshell. Let's see them one by one, okay? Let's start with the atomic size. Consider this. When the atomic size increases, the distance between the nucleus and the added electron also increases. Now, due to this large separation, the electrostatic attraction becomes weaker and the nucleus has less pull on the incoming electron, right? Whereas when the atomic size decreases, the nucleus is closer to the position where the new electron would be added, right? this stronger nuclear attraction pulls the electron more efficiently. So what can we say? In this first case, less energy will be released. So we can say that the electron gain enthalpy is going to be less negative and thus the resulting anion is less stable or even unstable if positive. And uh, when we are talking about this smaller size, here more energy is released. So we can say electron gain enthalpy is more negative. Now, you have to be very careful in applying this. It is not as straight as it sounds. You have to be careful when the size is very, very small. Like in case of fluorine, the atom is so tiny that the repulsions increases. We'll talk more about this, okay? Now, if we have to talk about the effective nuclear charge, which we write like this, Z effective, right? So, Z effective is what? It is the net positive charge felt by an electron. Can we say that? Okay, so when the effective nuclear charge is less, so the nucleus exerts weaker attraction on the added electron, which is exactly what happens when the atomic size was high. All right, so here when the effective nuclear charge is going to be less, the nucleus will exert very less force of attraction on this incoming electron. So what does that mean? Less energy is going to be released. So we can say electron gain enthalpy is less negative. Whereas you can see that when the atom was small, that means the nuclear forces of attraction on this incoming electron would be high, right? So we can say if Z effective increases, 
then electron gain enthalpy is also going to become more negative as more energy will be released in this case. Atom is going to become more stable when the electron is entering because it is being invited by the nucleus. Think of it like that, okay? So more negative electron gain enthalpy means that there is more stability coming up. But like I said, be very careful with very small atoms like fluorine, okay? Now the third one is screening effect. First, let's understand what is screening effect. Let's take a look at an atom, okay? So you would see that these inner electrons actually shield the outermost electron from this nuclear attraction or nuclear pull, right? So what can we say? More inner electrons, especially the ones which are in SNP orbital, shield the nuclear charge from being fully felt by these outer electrons, right? And hence, what can we say? These outer electrons don't feel the full nuclear pull. So the incoming electrons isn't strongly attracted. And if it is not strongly attracted, this case when the screening effect is high becomes a very similar case when the effective nuclear charge is low, right? So if the screening effect is high, the incoming electron feels less attraction from the nucleus because it's blocked by the inner electron. Think of more shells here, right? So you can imagine that the nuclear forces of attraction is becoming less. So less energy will be released and we can say electron gain enthalpy is less negative. Whereas when the screening effect is less, that means the nucleus can exert greater pull on the incoming electron which results in more negative electron gain enthalpy as more energy will be released in this case. All right. Now, the last case, which is the most interesting case, which is actually kind of the case which is going to bring some exceptions and also the positive electron gain enthalpy. So far, we were talking about negative electron gain enthalpy because usually you would see that most of the atoms wants to gain an electron. But there are certain cases where they don't want to accept an electron at all. So the ones which have half filled or fully filled subshell they are in a very stable state. They are in their Zen mode. And if you deliberately give them an electron, they're like, hey, no, I'm sorry, we don't want it. You get it? So yes, that is exactly the case. The adding of an electron disturbs the stability and introduces increased repulsion. So electron gain enthalpy is going to be less negative or in some cases even positive. Now that you've understood all the factors, let's try to apply them across the period and down the groove. For that, here is our periodic table. And now let's move from left to right. So as we move along the period, we know that the effective nuclear charge increases. What happens? What happens to the size? The size decreases, right? And what happens to the effective nuclear charge? The effective nuclear charge increases. And we just learned that when the effective nuclear charge increases, the electron gain enthalpy becomes less negative. Okay? So, let's consider the second period elements. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. Okay? So, we might think that lithium should have the least negative electron gain enthalpy and fluorine should have the highest negative electron gain enthalpy. Because neon, we already figured out that it has fully filled electronic configuration. So, it doesn't want to accept electrons. So, of course, electron gain enthalpy will be positive in this case as it will become unstable on accepting electron. So, neon is sorted. But the trend that you might expect here is not as straight. I told you, it's a little tricky here. This is what the trend is. Neon, we already figured out that the electron gain enthalpy of neon is going to be positive as it becomes unstable on accepting electron. Beryllium also we can decode, yeah? Because this also has a fully filled subshell. So again, beryllium will also have a positive electron gain enthalpy. Nitrogen has half-filled electronic configuration. So because it has half-filled subshell, the electron gain enthalpy is going to be less negative. And then we have lithium, boron, carbon, oxygen. Fluorine out of all of these has higher negative electron gain enthalpy. So what does that mean? That fluorine still relatively wants to accept an electron. And if it does that, F- is a stable anion. We know that. 
okay but what will be interesting is to observe what happens down the group specifically for this group 17 and group 16 let's see what happens as we go down the group so when we go down the group we know that the size increases right so if the size increases we just learn that the electron gain enthalpy should become less negative but hey i told you there are exceptions here are the exceptions that i was talking about oxygen sulfur fluorine and chlorine and while explaining the factors affecting the electron gain enthalpy i told you wherever these small elements will be coming effective nuclear charge is not going to increase as much as you think it would because electronic electronic repulsions are going to dominate so yes you might expect the order should look something like this right but yeah order is actually different in fact here are the values that you must see look at this oxygen is minus 141 and then we have minus 200 then we have minus 195 minus 190 minus 174 so you can see that the order is not that smooth as we thought it would be and here also if you see group 17 so yes see astatine we don't even talk about because it's highly radioactive so let's consider these four group 17 elements fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine Iodine is minus 295. Clearly, it is least negative. So, you can see fluorine doesn't have as much negative electron gain enthalpy as chlorine has. Chlorine is becoming more stable on accepting electron as compared to fluorine on accepting electron. So, this is the expected actual order. Let's try to understand why such exceptions are coming up. See, the problem is this fluorine and oxygen are having very small size in their respective groups. So, addition of an electron causes what? Well, electron-electron repulsion and that is why the system becomes comparatively unstable. So, it is easy to add an electron to chlorine and sulfur rather than adding an electron to fluorine or oxygen. So, this is due to the larger sizes of chlorine and sulfur and that is why chlorine has the highest negative electron gain enthalpy value. Okay, now I have a very interesting question for you. We've understood what is electron gain enthalpy. For example, the neutral atom that we are taking is, let's say, oxygen. And we add an electron, what we get is O minus. And this is how we define as electron gain enthalpy, which is the energy change involved in making this anion from a neutral gaseous atom. But let's say I already have O minus gaseous atom. All right. In that, if we add further one electron to make it O2 minus, what about the enthalpy change in this case? Hmm? Well, let's look at the electron gain enthalpy values in these two cases. So, when we are adding one electron to a neutral oxygen atom, the electron gain enthalpy is minus 141 kilojoule per mole. So, that means it's a negative electron gain enthalpy on adding an electron. That means oxygen is becoming stable. But after we have formed O minus, adding one more electron to it is only going to make the electronic electronic repulsions worst. So, the second electron gain enthalpy is plus 744 kilojoule per mole. So, what does this plus signify? That it's a positive electron gain enthalpy and on gaining this electron, O minus is becoming unstable. Likely so because you can imagine oxygen is a small atom. It already has seven electrons in the outermost shell and now you are adding one more electron making the electron-electron repulsions worst, right? So, we can say electron gain enthalpy for the addition of a second electron to a neutral atom is positive and that is always so without exception, okay? And this is because of the electron repulsions outweighs the nuclear attraction. So, it is not just the second electron gain enthalpy. Subsequent electron gain enthalpies are also going to be positive. So, we can say that second and subsequent electron gain enthalpies are always positive. Okay.